Okay, yeah, I wanted to go ahead and share, um, you know, as uh, as I started PA school, it's been a really good opportunity for me to to kind of just take to the next level of, of kind of practicing what I preach and, um, and in a particularly challenging environment um, in a healthcare environment where the goal is for everyone to stay healthy. Ironically, most people in PA school are, are not that healthy um, physically and mentally or emotionally. Um, so I kind of wanted to share some of the things that I've learned, and I really am excited about the fact that uh, PA school completely taking over my schedule um, has really pushed me to put together sort of everything that I've learned as a nutrition coach in a new way. I'm always trying to apply what I'm learning and teaching, but um, uh, but this is a new uh, a new challenge for me. So I kind of wanted to share, and there's going to be a lot of specific takeaways. I'm, this is going to be a kind of a rapid fire. I'm just going to show you everything that I'm doing. Um, and then uh, you can take and apply anything that you want to apply to your life, um, specifically when time is really tight and you have to make trade-offs between what's most important with your time and what's most important with your health. Uh, I can't do everything that I want to do. And so this is how I've kind of prioritized the things that I want to do. So stop me if you have any questions or anything you want to want to share. Um, the big takeaway that I'm that I'm wanting to like approach this with is that time is our most valuable resource. And so stewarding that is super important. Um, and then just my goal is to just be consistent over being perfect because there's no way I can be I could perfectly take care of my body. I really can't hit my step goal every day because some days I'm just studying for 12 hours. Um, but if I can get steps it, if I can Maybe I didn't hit my step goal of 8,000 or 10,000, but if I get some kind of steps every day, um, I could feel really, really good about that. And then another big takeaway that I'm, that I'm seeing just in real time is that little decisions, small minutes, like five minutes of a walk or five minutes outside, they really do make a big difference. And so if you're new to your health journey or if you are really, really pushed for time, I would just encourage you the little decisions Lots of little decisions. I would call them like micro behaviors um, make a big difference. Um, so, you know, we call this kind of the four pillar approach. Uh, I've been thinking about um, peace, exercise, nutrition, and sleep as all of like the holistic approach to how I'm going to make it through through PA school. And um, asterisk, you know, I'm new to this. So maybe I'm going to fail out in a couple of weeks uh, and maybe I'm not doing anything well, you know. Uh, but this is the this is the strategy that I'm taking, and if it doesn't work, you'll know you'll know soon. But uh, most people, really in PA school, really do talk about it as if it's a pretty miserable experience. And so I'm testing, you know, what if is there a way that I can? There's a certain amount of pain that you're just going to have to go through. But what I'm testing is, is there another way to do this? And actually, can I put my body and physical health um, as a priority? And will that actually maybe help me do better in school rather than just putting that on the back burner? Um, will will I actually thrive better? Um, that's kind of the experiment that I think is in in uh, in place rather than just studying the whole time and just trying to get the grades and um, and all that. Because most people really do say that they go through PA school and really their health goes to crap and they just make it through. Um, I'm wondering if there's a chance, can I get better grades and thrive more by taking care of my body first? Um, so my schedule, and by, this is also just for, for all my clients, cause I haven't been as good at communication as I'd like to over the last couple of weeks, figuring out what my schedule looks like. It's just been a, a big adjustment, but pretty much Monday to Wednesday, waking up 6am and going right to my computer. Um, and I'm pretty much working until 7 30 at night, seven at night is when our lecture ends. So I'm either studying or in class or lab until then Thursday is the same, but it's a little bit more flexible. So still putting in a pretty long day, but um, it starts, my official class starts a little bit later and it's like a half day. So I can do this training now Thursday afternoon, but st most Thursdays I'll be working in the evening as well. And then uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, the average is about eight hours of studying each day. Um, but again, those are eight flexible hours. I can do them in the morning or the evening, whatever works with my schedule. So um, just for all my clients, Thursday afternoons is when I'll be scheduling most things. And then Friday, uh, Friday afternoons as well, I'll have a block. Um, so that's the best time 
uh, for me to communicate and to work on things. Um, okay, so the first thing, peace and mindset. Um, I, the mindset that I'm taking is that hard things are good and a challenging season is a really good opportunity to grow. Um, I've always tried to encourage that and other people, I always try to live that myself. Um, and unfortunately, um, my class hasn't, it's not, we've not been in long enough. That my class is really complaining a lot, but complaining is just like what students do. They just, students just didn't teacher. We didn't have the right slides that, you know, the teacher didn't know what they're talking about. They said one thing and it's just a very, I mean, y'all, y'all have seen that, right? That's no. yeah. So I'm trying to really, really, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty, too, but I've made some rules for myself that I just am not going to say, oh, this is so hard. It is hard, but it's a good thing. And so I don't, I'm not going to uh, bemoan that. And actually, it's been really cool. I've already had a couple of people comment that like, hey, I appreciate your your positive attitude. And it's, it's I've not been obnoxiously positive. I just try to say, hey, you know, it's going to be tough, but you know, people make it through, uh, just something like that has, has been helpful for other people as well. Um, uh, and the biggest thing I'm trying to do is get comfortable with stress because stress is a thinking about stress, not as like a negative, a bad thing in my life, but as something that's preparing me to do well. And so, uh, so stress is a preparatory mechanism for my body. If I didn't have any stress in PA school, I wouldn't have the motivation to put in back-to-back -back long days when I need to do that. So when I'm feeling very stressed, usually I'm like, hey, okay, that just means I need to take care of something. Um, and a lot of times that means I just got to get up early tomorrow morning and knock it out, take care of it. So just a couple of things there that I think I may not apply to y'all, but I, I've got I've got a couple of clients who are in a, in a studying season or in a really busy season. It's really easy to get overwhelmed by that stress and to complain about that stress. Um, and I just would encourage people to, to uh to try to reframe that as much as they can um exercise i'm having to give up a lot of activity time each week i'm down to very just a, a few sessions and used to this is a unique thing about my season but it'll apply to everybody at least when you're like on vacation or you have the holidays come around y'all know those times of the year where you just like can't stick with your program right like you get out of rhythm um, everybody has times where they get out of rhythm. I guess my like encouragement is I'm not really able to do my four day a week strength training where I'm really trying to focus on my muscles. And like, I've shifted the focus to, I'm just going to be able to maintain my body. I can already actually tell I'm getting a good amount weaker. I can tell cause my back is popping a lot more frequently. So I'm just literally like, I can tell I'm just already getting weaker. I lose, I lose my strength really quickly. Um, but I'm going to have to just give up a certain amount of that. But what I'm not going to give up is the activity that I can handle. Cause like I'm shifting the focus from taking care of my body to taking care of my brain and mental health. Um, and I say like, what, I, what I'm doing is I'm like chasing dopamine. So all throughout my day, I'm trying to, instead of being really, really kind of depressed by just sitting in a place and studying all day and going crazy, I'm just trying to do anything I can to kind of just give myself a little hit of of like a good kind of a good kind of natural healthy stimulant. So I'm doing a lot more short bouts of cardio. So I'm on our, I'm using our home equipment for you know body push-ups, kettlebell swings, um, cycling. I'm doing 15 to 20 minute sessions. Um waking up early when I have to and going on a walk around the block, even if it's at 6 a.m. And then in between classes, even if it's just five minutes, I try to get up and walk outside. And so again, I'm saying I'm chasing dopamine like crazy. <laughs> Those little hits, I really think are keeping me sustained uh, throughout the day. <laughs> so I get the takeout here, the takeaway here is shifting from a body focus. I'm now working out for my brain and for my mental health. So a lot more cardio, um, a lot less heavy weights. Heavy weights when I can, but I probably can only do that once or twice a week. Um yeah, I'm doing more working out at home. And that's why I always tell my clients, and I don't know, do y'all have any home home gym equipment, really? We have a few little dumbbells. Yeah, I tell my clients, like, I, I'm, I want you to have something at home, but I don't, because I want you to be able to do that. I want you to have that option. But, like, 
for the brain stuff, like when life gets crazy and you just need to move your body for your mental health, but there's only so much you're going to be able to do that, that's really going to make a big impact on your physical health. So I'm just like, that's my philosophy is work out in a place designed to give you a good workout. But you should also have the option to just knock something out wherever you go. So, um, so anyways, that's my, my kind of thought there. Nutrition, I'm really, it's been a big blessing that I've been able to just have a good foundation in nutrition here because this one has been the easiest for me. I'm more or less keeping the things the same. It just, my prep is just a lot more important. So I'm still prepping my oats. I'm doing a protein shake before I walk out the door. I've usually got a couple hard boiled eggs. Maybe I'll scramble them if I don't have any hard boiled eggs left. And then my wife and I are prepping a carb and a meat with a veggie for lunch and dinner. And so that has been super simple for me. Um, I'm eating a little bit less food just because I'm I'm not lifting as hard. I'm just sitting at class a lot more. So I'm eating less food, but not like I didn't tank my food because still my brain's working a lot. So I still need food. Um, but I'm eating less. I'm drinking less alcohol because I'm doing less social functions. And so I'm, I'm probably sleeping a little bit better. Um, and unfortunately, I am moving a lot less. I don't know how much less because my watch has stopped charging. So I'm not tracking my steps. That's the biggest thing that I want to change is that I don't know how many steps I'm getting. I can estimate it, but I don't think that's very accurate. So eating less, drinking less, moving less. <laughs> two for three <laughs> or one for one for two, depending on how you look at it. Um, my sleep, I have added... Um, uh, magnesium glycinate. So I'll, I'll have Donna jump in. Um, give me one second here. Hey, Donna, can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Hey, I start a little bit early just because I wasn't sure if anybody's going to be able to jump on. But I'll just, I'll walk you through this and then I can go through at the end and show you anything you missed, okay? Okay. Um, I've been talking with people about magnesium glycinate. Are, is anybody taking it? Yeah, I'm taking I'm magnesium. Yeah. Uh, do you know what, what kind it is, Donna? I do not know. I'd have to, and I'm not home, so I can't go look at the bottle. Yeah. I encourage you to look at the bottle. I, I've like kind of told people to get on it for a little bit, but my sleep has never been that big of an issue. I just need a lot of it sort of. Um, but being under the pinch of PA school, I definitely, okay, my wife and I actually, actually both without talking to each other, both ordered magnesium on Amazon. Neither of us knew the other one did. So we, we were like, I ordered that. It's like, no, I ordered it. Um, so I did start supplementing with magnesium. I have noticed a difference. I do really like that. Um, our bedroom is very cold. Uh, we have a AC window unit there. I'm using that sunrise alarm clock and then I'm keeping my phone way out of the bedroom. So again, those are just very basic things, but I've tweaked those and really committed to those. And that's been really helpful. I will say I had a hard time getting out of bed this morning. So I slept in another probably 30 minutes that I didn't really want to, but anyways, um, so basically, I just made a couple of tweaks to just double down and really focus <clears throat> focus on these things. It probably wasn't as important for me to like supplement when I just wasn't quite as pushed to the limit, but now I'm trying to get all the help I can get. So the way you could apply that is if you're traveling or something and you don't normally supplement with it, I would have this in your back pocket to double down when you can. Um, a couple other pieces that I'm doing. Um Cold showers, again, a, a cold shower is another really good dopamine hit um, that's really, really good to just kind of stimulate your body. You feel alive after you do that. Um, have anybody, do y'all take cold showers ever? No. The way Only to when use... I jump in a river. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I just can't do a cold shower. Yeah, I, I get that. The way you could, if you ever want to try it, the way you can ease into it, and it is better to do it in the summer because you're going to be able to stick with it a little bit better. But the way you can do it is get in a hot shower and just slowly turn it down. And just at the very end, go a little bit colder. Now, I have done that, but it's not cold. Yeah. It's, it's warm. 
Yeah. Oh so it just even just doing that, it's still dopaminergic and it's still like you you can get the you can get the again, I don't necessarily care about a big physiological change that, you know, like it's not like some people do like a cold ice bath for like fat burning or something. No, I just care about you giving yourself that okay, and your body kind of clicks back on. So again, that's more about just it's more about getting another hit throughout the day to keep me from crashing. <laughs> um, and awesome music playlist. So if you're having a hard time making it through your workouts or you're just having a hard time loving life, you hit a wall, having a really good music playlist. I've, I've been going back to some music that I love and that's been really helpful as well. So, you know, I hit a wall in my studying, pop in a good, pop in a good song, walk around, and, you know, again, five minutes makes a big difference. The other thing I'm using, I'll show these real quick. I'll be right back. Um, I am wearing blue light glasses almost. Some people just wear them in the evening. I'm wearing blue light glasses 100% of the day. Um, they just filter out the blue light from your screens because I'm on a screen pretty much the whole day. And if I'm looking on an iPad, a phone, a computer, a, a projector screen, it's you could just feel, you know, when you get that feeling when your eyes feel like they've been lifting weights. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand yeah. that. And th these have made I think these cost nine dollars on Instagram. They've made a massive difference in just how my eyes feel. I'm getting to the end of the day and I'm tired, but I don't have that eye, eye kind of fatigue from the screens. So these are just a couple of things I do, you know, cost nine bucks and it's been really, really helpful. So um, I guess my, like nothing on here to me is that complicated. Nothing on here is too hard to stick with. The hardest thing to stick with is just continual movement throughout the day and just waking up in the right time in the morning. But once you get moving, you know, like none of this is too hard. I'm getting my food prep down to it's taking me. My wife is definitely helping, but not taking long to prep food. Uh, you know, it doesn't take, uh, you know, it doesn't take much to quit alcohol when you're tired. You just don't want to drink because you don't want to be tired the next day. Um, and then it's not hard to do really short bouts of of cardio and exercise. So it's, it's. I don't know. I, I guess like my encouragement is that almost anybody can put into practice what I'm doing. Nothing that I'm doing is incredibly complicated. Um, so I hope that's, I hope that's encouraging. I hope you can apply, um, hope you can apply something from this list that you could kind of focus on or add more attention to. Um, and I hope it's, I hope it's, it's sort of helpful. You use my, you know, copy me. The best thing you could do is find someone that's having success is something that you want to have success at and then just try to do exactly what they do. So I'll stop the recording here.